All right, let's hop into it. It's Coach Blake. You're going to be going over your Trinomir gameplay here. So first things first, we have to understand that Trinomir is a hyper aggressive champion early, and he's also a hyper scaling champion later. What does that mean? It means that even if he is behind, he can still get to a point where he's pretty much unstoppable. But when he's ahead, oh, he's really ahead. So being able to play to those two win conditions in one champion is always a pretty good thing. And that's why Trinomir is a really good pick. It's because he's just really good at playing that late game. But he's also pretty amazing. And even though he gets behind, he can still make stuff happen. He can still make stuff work. The downside of Trimir is he doesn't, we don't really have team fight potential. So if we're going to be looking at team fight, we have to make sure we're flanking of some sort. We cannot be coming from in front of them. We have to come from the side of them or behind them. Okay. So we know that we're against Nasus here. We know that he wants to pretty much sit here and farm, which means we want to try to keep the wave so we're close to the back of our tower. To the back of our tower? Closer to the front of our tower so that we can easily run him down when we want to start going for that kill. You have two ways to play this early game. We could go for the level two all-in cheese, or we could try to have it push up to here, let Nasus think he's safe, and then go for the level two all-in. Or level three. Which one seems a little bit more harder to predict the level two cheese that mostly every trimmer usually does or having the trimmer play passive and then randomly going aggressive when the wave is in his favor especially dealing with the champ like Gnosis you're not going to be able to burn him down unless you get extremely lucky on your crits and we don't really want to try to take chance with those crits and we can just set up a nice easy kill without having to do anything like that so the first thing that we want to take a look at here is when looking to force level two, we don't really want to make it too obvious, you know, and you also have to remember that you'll be shoving lane. So we need to learn how to shove the lane without getting level two or shove the, get level two without shoving the lane too hard. So as we see right here, this is pretty cool. A little, little auto there. I like that. Okay. Another auto. I like that. Nothing was wrong with it. Now we don't necessarily want to lose CS for those autos. Just keep in mind when you're going for that, when you're looking to go autos, make sure that you're not losing CS for it. All right, we go in, level two cheese, and he gets away. Now, let's say we do get this kill. Do we get this kill because you did that perfect level two play, or do you get this kill because he underestimated how much damage you did, even though he's at half HP, and not using his potions or his biscuits. All right, we didn't really play it well. He just didn't respect us. And when you get to a higher elo, right? When you're diamond, when you're when you're a master, when you're grandmaster, those players will then know. I don't walk up to this guy, especially with half HP, when he's about to level two. So it's very important that we don't fall on the line of thinking that well, I can go ahead and do this because a you might not even get the kill, but b you might be being baited. Like that, people, the junglers will just be like, you're gonna do it. Let us let me sit here and wait for you. Because usually all Trinomirs do it. Which is why you wanna add your own little flavor to your Trinomir, Trinomir play. You don't wanna do what every other Trinomir does because you're gonna get predictable. And when you're predictable, all five other players can easily take advantage of that, okay? Next thing here that we wanna talk about is you always wanna look to commit, to commit for the kill, even when you have them ignited. Whether you wanna use your, unless of course, you know, you, you're about to die and you can't dive and you're trying to get that last tick to hopefully kill him. That's a different story. Right here, if we go back, we willingly stopped attacking him because we thought that... Let me turn the sound down a little bit. Uh, 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 okay, so we willingly stopped attacking him because we thought that we could kill him. Attack. Attack. You could get one more in, but you just decide to leave. And then he gets away. Now, it sucks, right? Because you could have got that kill. That could have been some nice, juicy kills. But we, we, we messed up. We just thought, oh, well, maybe we can kill him. And now, because we didn't kill him, we want to get a little bit greedy. And we decide to go for this play. And we get killed for it because that's pretty predictable. I wouldn't turn the mirror do that, you know? And he, he caught you slipping. You, luckily, you got a kill out of that. Once again, he just kind of played it poorly. We don't want to climb because they play it poor. We want to climb because we're playing it better than them, okay? Next one 
is make sure you have patience. You know, before committing for a kill, make sure we know where the jungler is. Our main goal really is to just, if we see right here, our main goal is to just get him out of lane. And I think he did a really good job. I think that he's really low and he doesn't really have any way to sustain back other than his auto attacks. You don't really need to look for this kill. He's gonna be scared. He walks up, you auto, you E out. Walks up, auto, you E out. That way we don't over committing for a play like this and forcing our flash. Well, he still has his teleport up, meaning that, well, yeah, I die. I mean, I got the kill, but he gets to teleport back to lane. He chooses not to, but he, he gets to teleport back to lane when he messes up. When you mess up, you have to walk, which means that if there's nothing that's happening and he keeps teleporting back to lane while you keep walking, he's just going to eventually be ahead of you just because he's able to get there faster. So we don't want to make any plays where if we mess up, even if we get the kill, this guy could teleport back and I'm forced to walk back, wasting time and losing out on CS. Okay? So be patient. He's going to mess up again. And when he messes up again, you go on him again. He allowed you to go on him like three times before that whole situation happened. Wait for it. Let, let him push you back. He's going to either sit back here and be zoned by you, or he's going to back. Or he's going to die. Right? You force him into, you force him into the tunnel you want him to go through. You don't want to try to go through his tunnels. You're the one with the pressure. You're the one with the priority. We're the one that we know that, oh, I'm better than this guy. I can outplay this guy, so to speak, you know. We should be the one forcing him to do what we want to do. So just with a little bit more patience, that could have been a free secured kill. And we wouldn't have had to die there. Once again, we're in the same predicament where we're kind of just shoved up. Not really sure what we're doing with the shove. And then we get ganked for it. Right? And this is why it's important to know, okay, I'm shoving because of this. I'm shoving because of that. When you're doing something in League of Legends, you need to make sure that there's thought behind whatever you're doing. If there's no thought behind what you're doing and we're just kind of doing things regularly, we're not going to be able to improve because we won't know what to improve on. But when you're actively thinking about what you're doing, you can say, oh, that wasn't right. Let me go this way. That wasn't right. Let me go that way. You know? Next thing here is 18 minutes. So we, got, we were able to get a kill here. This is pretty good. We came around, able to get, you know, a double kill here. Then, no, a triple kill, I'm sorry. And then we decided to back. There's no one defending this right now. This is free. You can take the extra wave and take the tower. You don't necessarily need to reset for dragon because by the time dragon comes up, your teammates can get there before the, these guys get here. And you're also forcing one of their players, if not two, to come stop you. So you can get two extra waves and you can get some heavy damage on this tower if not actually just break the tower or 18 minutes in so that should be pretty free for you to get and instead we choose to back just one thing to keep in mind you're low you're not useless if there's openings like this you have to look for those because you don't really get openings that much to split push when you're in higher elos players usually know how to deal with it because they know what can happen if they let you do it so when you get these opportunities you have to make sure you're taking advantage of them there's nobody here to defend against you. Why not go for it? We just killed everybody. Why not go for it? Nasus just teleported. Why not go for it? You know, a little simple stuff like that can go a long way for you. Also, one thing to kind of just point out here, if you ever get to a point where you can't really dive the laner, let's say Nasus is freezing it and he's extremely tanky and you can't really dive him and he just keeps defending and it's like, well, what do I do? Like, I can't push past you. And you're just kind of holding the wave. Do I just sit here? What you want to do is you want to start bouncing around and pressuring other lanes, forcing him to react. Oh, if you turn him down here, what the heck? Got to down here. Then after you push it and you know that he's coming, you back and then go back top. He's like, what the heck? And then you back and go mid if there's opening mid. And then you just keep doing that. Eventually he's going to stop or you're just going to get some free towers because he can't be everywhere at one time. And if you burn his teleport or Zeras teleport, that's even better. That's two teleports down when you're just getting far and just bouncing around because you can't realistically get anything here so why why stay so when you do get a situation like that where we're against an orn nonsense malphite malachi shin those tanky champs where you just can't really roll over because they're extremely tanky then you can use that you can use that option to just bounce around and look for other pushes elsewhere so if we see right now nobody even went top so you could have even probably got some more damage on this tower because nobody went top. K 
Okay, so 23 here. One thing we want to keep in mind is split pushing is a stall tactic. Split pushing isn't a way of life, so to speak. It's a stall tactic. What we see Nasus do right here is he's split pushing, right? And he basically wants you guys to stop pushing because he's scared. Usually when you're split pushing, you're causing the pressure. You're stalling or you're causing pressure to make it so that the team has to react to you, right? There's no reason to really back and defend this because we can just win this fight and win the game. If we look at where the positioning is of everybody, we see Ezreal and Yumi mid, which means there's only two right here. If we just come down here and dive this guy, then there'll be only three to deal with you. We die, and then we kill this guy, and that's a 5v2. And then Ezreal and Yumi are not going to be able to defend this tower. You take this, you take that, you take this, and the game's over. So understand that just because someone's pushing, really weigh the, weigh the pros and cons. Can we win this fight and get multiple things while this guy trades a tower? And if he continues to push, can we end the game? Definitely, definitely. Especially because he's behind. This is just one other tactic to make sure that the game lasts a little bit longer so he can get back in. And you fall right into that trap. Or you fell right into that trap. Luckily though, your team was able to, to pull some stuff off. And they were able to take advantage of what we wanted to take advantage of in the first place. But we didn't because we backed. And he gets a tower anyway. So you don't really do anything to that. And our team could be in a really bad situation if they mess up a play or something like that. We could have easily affected it, two shot people, and ended the game right here. So. The last thing here that I just kind of want to talk about is if you're going to sit in bushes, make sure you have a pink and a scanner. There's a bush that you sat into later into the game, and we didn't have a pink or a scanner, and we just were kind of sitting there. And I can't tell you how many times I'll see a game turn because they were able to pick off that person. Now you are ex extremely, extremely like slippery, right? I get that, but it doesn't mean you can't die. So we go ahead and try to sit right here as a ward right here, right? And so if they wanted to try to collapse on you, they would have just killed you. They don't even, they're not even looking to move. Nobody's even looking to move. We're over here trying to get buffs and stuff and Nobody even cares. <laughs> so that's the type of stuff that you kind of can get away with. And it's why I feel like sometimes solo queue isn't really a good teaching ground sometimes. Because there's certain things you can do in certain elos that you get away with, but you're not really sure if it was good or bad. Kind of like a kid touching a stove, right? If the stove is off, the kid's going to be like touching the stove. And the mom or the dad's going to be like, don't touch the stove. It can get, it, you know, it's hot. It can get hot. And the, the kids are gonna be like, well, it's not hot right now, you know, and then they'll touch it again because they weren't listening and they'll burn themselves. That's how League of Legends is. That's how the gameplay is. Some plays, it might work. And you might be taking that into your next games and you'll see it working. And then they get to a point where it's not gonna work anymore. And you're not gonna know why it works. When the first place it wasn't supposed to work, you just were able to pull it off because of the elo or because of the champs that you're playing and stuff like that. So really be more aware of what you're doing and you can easily, easily improve on some of the strategies that we're doing here. So the main thing that I think that might be keeping you down, main thing that I think that we should be working on here is definitely learning how to pull the wave back and going in at times where they don't expect it. Rather than trying to do something, they can expect it and make a play for it because they have to run all the way from your tower to get to their tower. And when it's an unexpected type of engage, they're already gonna be committed to a minion you know how when they walk up and they auto a minion they're committed to that minion and that's when you can go and they weren't expecting it and you can chase them all the way down next thing that we want to think about is we want to make sure that when we are going to go for towers and farm and stuff like that if there's no way to defend might as well take it might as well take it but the main thing that stalled this game out a lot longer than it had had to been and a main re a main thing that could have easily had have them turn the tables if your team messed up is the fact that we didn't commit to this this kill down here with the Zerath and the Lee Sin. Even if it was just Zerath, that was enough because Nasus was up here. So it's still essentially a 2v5 because Yumi's on somebody. She's not really a champion there. And then we dive them and we proceed to win the game. That is one major point, major plot point that I think that can have us end a lot of games and can have us lose a lot of games if we don't take advantage of the fact that we can end them. So understanding when the game is over, understanding 
how they can possibly react to us it's going to have you guys or it's going to have you be in a better position to close out these games better position to make these calls like barons dragons stuff like that when we understand the whole situation going on not just what we're looking at okay so i hope this helped you if you have any questions feel free to message me um, but otherwise have a good rest of your day or night and this is coach blaker signing off